Hi, my name's Adam and I'm back here again with Sean and today we're going to look at should I tithe? And, um, well, should I? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're not, you should, Adam. Well, thank you. I'll get straight on that. Um, <laughs> this is one of the biggest battles to, to start with for a person is, is we're aware of the se various separations in the scripture. There's things under the law. There's yes. you know, suddenly people, well, what do we do with those things that are under the law? And tithing is a big one. Uh, the place I'd start where I would want to convince someone actually that it is an act of faith and not just a, yeah. an act of fulfilling a, a, a command would be to go as far back as Genesis 14, which is ancient, ancient history. And we know mm. at that time you've got Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And what you see when you read the account of Abraham in Genesis 14 is he goes and saves his nephew Lot. And when he's coming back from winning this victory over these kings, he meets this guy Melchizedek, who's this mysterious figure in scripture. And and he, he immediately gives him a tenth of his, of his plunder. It's yeah. just this amazing moment. And then Melchizedek's gone and, and he pops up later in, in Hebrews, etc. But essentially, Abraham, by faith, just looks at this guy Melchizedek, who is clearly not just a normal human person, and he recognizes in him something greater than, and in a sense, someone who had something to do with his victory. And he yeah. gives him this tenth. And then what you see is, Jacob, his grandson, it pops up when Jacob is almost mm. um, making a deal with God. He says, uh, if you'll be my God and you'll get me to, to where I need to be, of everything I have, I'll give you a tenth. Right. And you realize, okay, well, that passed down from Abraham to Isaac and then to Jacob. And, and it wasn't in any way legislated. It wasn't in any way told to them that they had to do it. The law hadn't even been put in place. Right. Purely an act of faith. That for me is a very good starting point. Yeah. And then, of course, we do see it codified in the law that they're meant to tithe. And, and that's what Jesus speaks about when um, he's talking to the Pharisees in Matthew, um, Matthew 23 and Luke 11. He has this same discussion. Um, and they've been very careful to tithe all the things that they can bring in and show that they're tithing. I think it's that these very visible obediences that they're proud of. And he says, well, you should have done this, but you shouldn't have neglected the hidden goodnesses um, that obeying the law would have caused you to do, like looking after your parents and stuff like this, you know. Um, and so there, there's a sense that Jesus actually affirms the tithe, but there is an argument where he affirms it for those under the law. <laughs> but like you're saying, actually the tithe existed before the law. Um, but then you mentioned that um, Melchizedek comes up again in Hebrews. And there... I love what it says there, um, that as we give our tithe into human hands, there's one who receives it. Um, and actually we testify he lives, as Hebrews 7, 8. And um, that we can testify that Jesus lives by, by faith, just like Abraham, by faith, put his tithe into what was a man stood in front of him, Melchizedek. Um, but in the scriptures in Hebrew, he says, no, but Melchizedek's without father, without child. No, he, there's no line that he just appears. Um, and he basically makes him a point that Melchizedek is a type of the Christ. He's, he's a Christ, Christophany, isn't it? I think that's what they call them. Uh, Christophany. Isn't that an <laughs> instrument? <laughs> yes. I, I, I've not played one. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, so he's, he's at this Christophany or Christophany or whatever you call that. And um, and so he likens that to us giving our tithes to Jesus. But how do we do that? By giving it to a man. So the question then, I think a logical question for many people is, if I'm giving my money to Jesus, Jesus takes many forms. Right. Uh, Jesus, did he not talk a lot about the poor? Did he not speak about looking after widows and orphans in, in distress? Uh, so you, you'll get a person who says, of course I'll tithe. Uh, I'll even yeah. give beyond the 10%, but I'm giving it directly to where I know it's needed. And yes. I know the Lord had, the Lord came in order to to help those type of people. And so uh, why would I even introduce a middleman into this? Uh, it's right. going to go directly <laughs> to where it's needed. Uh, what would you say to a person who's, who wants to take that course of action? Well, I think um, the Bible encourages us to be generous. That's definitely 
the heart of God is that we would not be focused on just a number of 10%, but that more and above that, we would be generous to those in need, that we would remember the poor, and that we would also help those in the household of faith. So our brothers and sisters in the church alongside us, that we would give to each as we see the need. But I don't think those things are tithing, because when we look at what tithing is, and remembering that the law is given and still remains in our Christian Bible, although we're not under the law, it remains there to teach us how God thinks and what he thinks about certain things. And so even if we're not obliged to obey the law, it's very instructive for us. And when we look at the law, and, and this is repeated in Malachi, which is one of the famous uh, tithing uh, scriptures, he says, bring the tithe into the storehouse so there's food in my house. And this is actually referenced in, in 1 Corinthians 9. So 1 Corinthians 9 13, it says, Do you not know that those who are employed in the temple service get their food from the temple because of the tithes brought in by the people of Israel? Uh, and when we think about that, I mean, literally there was a whole tribe, Levites, who didn't get land. When they came into the land, they lived off what the other tribes, the other 11 tribes, brought in. Um, and... Um, Yeah, so they are employed in the temple service. They get their food from the temple. Those who serve at the altar share in the sacrificial offering. So when people brought an offering, it was actually like a braai. um, And the the lamb would get roasted or whatever. And then they would eat that stuff. Or it would get boiled or the grain offerings, the oil offerings. These were all things that went into their pantry as priests. In the same way, it says in Corinthians, the Lord commanded that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel. And so that's quite a clear instruction that actually in the same way that a tithe was brought into the temple, that the priests could minister without having concerns of other sources of income. They could just devote themselves to the Lord. He's saying in the same way, those who have been called by God into an office to present the gospel um, can do that without having to concern themselves with other forms of income, that there'd be tithes coming in and that there would be food in the house. The, 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 not that we are priests, because we're all priests now, but there are still those who are devoted the gospel. So he doesn't call them priests. He says those who are preaching the gospel, who are doing that full time, um, but he likens it to the, to the Old Testament. And I think that's beautiful that we see, I think, from Abraham to Hebrews, from Malachi to Corinthians, we see that the tithe is very consistent across the board. There's not a matter of the law. It's actually something that all of us by faith can do. When we do it, we put our tithe into the hands of men. Obviously, we're trusting our money to a church. If you don't trust your church, you probably shouldn't belong to your church. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, tithing is not the issue if you don't trust your leaders. Uh, There's bigger issues there. But we put it into the hands of men who, by doing that, we actually by faith are putting it in the hands of Jesus. And that enables those who are full-time in the Lord to minister without concern for income, and, um, but ultimately, it's an act of faith. It's something that as we do it, we declare that Jesus lives and he's taking this and he's doing with it as he sees fit. Hmm. It's his money, not ours. Very good. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode of Be Equipped. Please like and subscribe in order to get access to more resources.